Uh, worst of the week, once again, you know, I'm feeling a little weird and it's only because right now it's, uh, we're in this horrific situation where we are aiding and abetting and sitting here watching a genocide take place, um, of the Palestinians. But the last several weeks, our people have been Jewish actresses, <laughs> um, who we've chosen. So we're on a roll. Uh, here we go. We're doing... Juliana Margulies, who has some words for her non-Jewish friends, she feels that their silence on anti-Semitism is loud. Uh, we'll get back to more detail there, but she was recently on a podcast, I don't know this podcast, or I don't know this guy, uh, explaining what is so upsetting to her about this younger generation who is protesting for peace in Palestine and protesting for an end to the, the genocide. So here's the first part of it. And then us, like, who are they, who do they think, they think that Hamas wants them alive? I, you know, there was a, there was a, a film being shown by the, this black lesbian club um, on Columbia campus. And they put signs up that said, no Jews allowed. And as someone who plays uh, a lesbian journalist on the morning show, I'm I'm more offended by it as a lesbian than I am as a Jew, to be honest with you, because I want to say to them, you fucking idiots. You don't exist. Like, you're even lower than the Jews. A, you're black, and B, you're gay. And you're turning your back against the people who support you? Because Jews, they rally around everybody. Right. It's, it's such a it, complicated it, it's situation. A okay. It's complicated. Uh, yeah, I, that's, I think he was trying to extricate himself from that because yeah. she did like eight things that were so vile. Um, the, the least vile of which, but it stands out as like, She's not a lesbian. She played one on TV. I don't know if she can be offended as a lesbian on TV. Like, you, like, yeah. I'm not as someone who has done blackface before. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you talking about? Um, but also that transactional idea. Like, the reason that I would hope that people were there during civil rights or there after George Floyd was murdered was not because, hey, then when we commit genocide that you know reciprocate like it was because that was the moral just right. thing to do it's so not bizarre. right or die with your your friends it's what's like right forever. or wrong here yeah like, yeah there's nobody that stuff. i would support unconditionally um anyway it gets a little worse you ready here we go movement the jews were the ones that walked side by side with with the blacks to fight for their rights mm -hmm. because they know. And now the black community isn't embracing us and saying, we stand with you the way you stood with us. Jews died for their cause. Where's the history lesson in that? Who's, who's teaching these kids? Because the fact that the entire black community isn't standing with us to me says either they they just are, don't know, or they've been brainwashed to hate mm -hmm. Jews. But when you've been marginalized so much as a community, the way I feel we have, isn't that when you step up? So that, Well, I think the brain, I think you're right. I think the brainwashing is that there's this narrative that's been created that Jews are the oppressor, Jews are genocidal. Um, when, have, when have we ever oppressed? Ever. You can use the argument for Israel. The UN... I mean, here's what here's what kills me, is that these kids are calling and choose colonialists. If you're going to go with that argument, kids, then get the fuck out of America, right? Because you were not here first, right? Native Americans were here, and you owe them a big fucking apology and move the fuck out. Yeah, we're the biggest occupier of all. 
it's funny because he keeps trying to kind of bring it back to some reality for her, right? And she just can't handle it. Go back where you came from is her message to black people, basically. And because she's can hear them out. You can hear her disdain for Americans having taken the place from Native Americans. Right. Like, so she gets it. Right there is your argument. That's your argument. Just yeah. step away from your cognitive, you know, dissonance. Yeah, exactly. Like, she, yeah, she gets it. Like, and go back also, to where you came from. <laughs> there's really something about the way she says the blacks, too, that just hits my ear wrong. Like, I mean, black people, people of color, right. but right. the blacks, I don't know. I don't know anyone that refers to the blacks. I agree. Yeah. It really shows that whatever she thought she was trying to do in solidarity was all for show and she didn't mean any of it. Because again, the truth is when you stand up for somebody because you believe in their cause, I mean, I guess she believes in her cause of just raising Gaza and making it completely for Israeli Jews. I mean, I don't even know, but like, like what a strange, so in her, um, she, she said that they said no Jews allowed, not what they said. The Columbia University lesbian group disinvites Zionists from their movie night. You know, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't know exactly how that was going. I mean, obviously that leaves no room for discussion. Um, and obviously they were trying to make a point, but it wasn't Jews. It, because, and by the way, there was, an enormous solidarity. This was on Columbia campus and it's where I went to school. So I've sort of been following it even more, but there, there was constant um, solidarity and, you know, camaraderie between, uh, you know, Jewish groups for peace, students for peace in Palestine, Palestinians for peace, black groups for like, peace and solidarity with like, those groups are all working fine together. And the fact that she's conflating Zionism with Judaism to me is incredibly anti-Semitic. Like, don't bring me down with that shit, please. Right. Um, but yeah, just so the condescension. I mean, we'll get into it more in our Israel section, but that's the whole game is conflating Zionism, anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. Because yeah. once you do that, you can't criticize anyone. You yeah, can't criticize exactly. Israel without it being anti-Semitic. I mean, basic obvious exactly. stuff everybody sees, except for the people who keep saying these terribly racist things. It's just amazing. And, you know, this whole thing, and again, like, there is anti-Semitism. Of course there's anti-Semitism. But that is talked about constantly, especially in this country, especially right now with, every, you know, the whole uh, Congress getting up to support Israel, the leader of the free world, sending, you know, no red line uh, military aid and financial aid to Israel. And meanwhile, it's Palestinian people in this country or Muslim people in this country who are being targeted and hurt right now and also in Gaza and, you know, the West Bank. But so these people were actually hurt they were shot in Burlington last week. Three young Palestinian men, Hisham Awartani, Tash, sorry, I don't have my glasses on, Tassin Ali and Kenan Albumadid, sorry, students at Brown and other university, U.S. universities were shot last night on their way to a family dinner in Burlington, USA. Their crime wearing a Palestinian kafia. They are critically injured. And six weeks ago, a six-year-old Palestinian child was stabbed 26 times in a hate crime in Illinois. The hate crimes against Palestinians must stop. Palestinians everywhere need protection. And, you know, that goes back to her uh, op-ed in, I don't, was it USA Today, saying that we're hurting and we're terrified because history has shown us that this won't end well for the Jewish people if you don't hear our cries for help. Did you know that the Jews, well, I guess she calls the Jews, so maybe that's just the way she talks about every group, uh, for only 0.2% of the world's population. Think about that for a minute. New York City has 8 million people in it. There are only 15 million Jews worldwide. We are a tiny community. In 2011, the Israelis exchanged 1,027 Hamas prisoners for one Israeli soldier. I don't pretend to be an expert on the Middle East conflict. I'm not. It's complicated. 
and has been going on for years. But I just want to give you a picture of how valuable one Jewish life is because there are so few of us. I mean, even in that statement, one Jewish life is worth 1,027 Palestinian lives. Like that is incredibly, if, if you're, and I don't think that's why the exchange is happening in that way, but even just to, to write it like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gross. There's just no two ways about it. And I mean, when, it, when you look at how Jewish people are treated in the U.S., there's anti-Semitism. They get blamed for a lot because there's a lot of Jewish money in our government is a big piece right. of it, to be honest. Right. Um, yeah. But they're not the root of all the evil. But there's a difference between how Jewish people are treated here versus over in Israel where they are not the oppressed group. They are they have the power. That's why they can be racist. If you don't have right. power, by most definitions, you, you can't be racist. It's another form of bigotry or... Uh, yeah. No, you're right. You I mean, yeah. I mean, the, right now, Israel is obviously committing a genocide. They are also, you know, always trying to start wars with the countries around them. And there is no desire from anybody in that government to try to create peace. I mean, they've stated it out loud for years. So to act and Again, yeah, of course, like there was a time and there still is like, you know, you see who's getting arrested. And, and also you see the biggest contingent of Zionists are not actually Jews. Um, it's a lot of born again Christians, right wingers, white supremacists, which is why uh, Netanyahu pals around with them. But uh, it, it, the anti-Semitism is coming. <laughs> it's just not what she thinks it is. It's for anybody who speaks out and isn't entirely in line with our government and the government right. of Israel. Yeah. And unfortunately, Israel's actions are only going to stoke real, the, the, the radical groups are going to only get amped up with valid claims against the country. But, you know, the thing rational people do is they blame a government, not a people you don't right. you know blame a race of people for for something um, right. but it's only it's only going to get worse it's making every jewish person in america less safe because these yeah. radical people are going to have more reasons to target you um anyway yeah we'll, we'll no, save it true. for the israel yeah. section yeah but anyway worst of the week once again a jewish actress sorry we are really going anti-Semitic. I know. It's me. Right? I'm the one. Yeah, I know. She <laughs> she can feel all the anti-Semitism coming from me. Um, well, I, I had a viral tweet today, apparently, uh, right before yes. the show. And it's got like, you know, all the worst people come out and make comments on it, too, because it's public domain. Right. And, and so right. I can see the real anti-Semitism. I can see how the, the worst people in the world are going to like what I had to say and share it because right. it's... But it's a truth still right. is the problem. And you can't just cover the truth up to prevent anti-Semitism. You need to. Yeah. You're not responsible for the way people about. respond. To, yeah. Um, I know the same thing happened to me when I wrote something about Israel's genocide or whatever it was. And somebody wrote underneath it, you know, the, you know, it's always the Jews is because they, yeah, I guess, you know, Kanye was right. They own Hollywood, you know, like. Right. Because there's been it's, so many different horrible things. And as soon as like, you open the door for that, but I mean, there's always, there's always going to be somebody like that, no matter what. They're just looking for an excuse, you know? Absolutely.